Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, in today's video I'm going to cover round 5 from Zadar. One of the toughest games uh, for me psychologically uh, to deal with. And le let me give you the context in the tournament for now. So I was in the upper half of the tournament uh, according to rating, which means that uh, in Swiss tournaments you are going to play somebody lower rated meaning that everybody who is below 50% of the tournament table uh, plays uh, somebody above. So in round one, I played a very low rated opponent. I won. In round two, I lost to a high rated opponent. Then in round three, I defeated a low rated opponent. In round four, again, I lost to a high rated opponent, which means a bad tournament. And then in round five, I'm playing a lower rated opponent again, and they basically have to win. I'm forced to win every uh, odd round because otherwise I'm, I'm going to lose a million points and and the tournament is ruined so there's a lot of pressure here and I'm playing an opponent who plays e4 plays the open Sicilian as you may know I no longer play the Karo Khan uh, against e4 now I play the Sicilian defense so I did some prep uh, and well I got mostly what I wanted so e4 uh, c5 the Sicilian defense, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop b5. My opponent went for the Rosolimo attack, which I like less than the normal open Sicilians with d4. Uh, I usually play the Sveshnikov, sometimes I'm going to play the Kalashnikov, sometimes I may even play uh, e6 or d6, but uh, most of the time I go for the Sveshnikov. Here I played g6, which I always play. And now uh, the main move for white is bishop takes c6, white can also castle, white can also play c3, which my opponent had played, so c3. Uh, the idea behind the move c3 is it prepares the move d4. Uh, so one thing that I know uh, for the moment is unless white plays d4, he doesn't have a way to develop the knight, so d4 is coming. Okay, what I want to do is reinforce the d4 square, so bishop to g7. Even though I've played bishop to g7, d4 is, is still possible, uh, especially if white wants to give up his bishop on c6. So let's say bishop c6, b6, d4, c4, d4, c4, d4 uh, something like knight f6. And I'm not really afraid of e5, I always have knight to d5. In this position, though, my opponent castled, and after knight f6, we are now in one of the main lines of the Rosolimo with a ton of games, a position I've had on my board numerous times, and something I'm familiar with and comfortable playing. Uh, here, uh, rook e1 was played, I castled, d4, which is the main move, c takes d4, c takes d4, and now black has several options. Uh, d5 is by far the most popular move. Uh, and it has been played, I think, a thousand times or 500 times. Uh, white scores slightly better, and I myself find the positions unpleasant for, for black, and I don't like playing them. So I've been preparing, not for this game, but in general, this weird line, very rare line with a6. And in this position, uh, white needs to decide what to do. Taking on c6 is not good, uh, giving up the bishop pair for nothing. Uh, the best move is bishop f1, which my opponent had played. And my opponent so far is playing like a very experienced uh, player, playing mainline theory, and his game is perfectly solid. So neither side really has an advantage here. According to the engine, white is slightly better, but it's nothing major. And now again, d5 is the best move. Uh, d5 is what gives black equality or a slight advantage if white mis misplays it. But I like this move d6 which again is rare and uh, should give white uh, an advantage, but it's not really easy to prove. My plan uh, to follow this up is going to be b5, bishop b7. I want to get my bishop to the most active diagonal and put pressure on, on white's king side, which, which for the moment is not easy because of the f1 bishop, but you could also argue that the b7 bishop is going to be much better than the f1 bishop. Here my opponent played h3, which surprised me, which is the best move, stopping bishop g4, uh, stopping knight g4. Um, and now I, well, I had to make a choice. e5 is a move, d5 is a move, bishop d7 is a move, b5 is a move. Uh, but I played a weird line, which I, 
I had on my board once. I couldn't remember the evaluation. I couldn't remember uh, why it was not optimal. I just knew that it's not that bad. And I wanted to play it because it's a tricky move. Now what I want and why d5 and d5 are the most popular moves uh, is I want to stop d5 and or e5 from uh, from white. So in this position, if I, if I play a nothing move like uh, king to h8, uh, d5 is annoying, I, I would have to play knight e5, in which case my pawn structure is ruined. Also e5 is, is not pleasant to meet, and he will get to exchange the queens off, and the position is going to be less active for me. So in any case, I need to do something about those threats. And the move I played was knight uh, to d7, which is a tricky move to meet if you don't know how to punish it. Now it's not ideal, and it's not the best move for black, but it definitely stops both of white's threats and enables me to play b5 eventually. Here knight c3 was played, which I understand that's objectively the most active move developing the piece. No b5. Uh, my opponent played a3 to stop b4, I played bishop b7, and he played b4 himself. And in this position I believe black is, from a human perspective, significantly better already. Uh, I have two monster bishops, uh, White is still going to have to develop uh, his c1 bishop to make it uh, parry my, my g7 bishop. And my position is just very pleasant. Rook to c8 was played uh, by me, bishop to b2, and now e6. Again, e6 may be imprecise, but I just want to solidify my position, develop my pieces, and then strike in the center later. Uh, rook to c1, queen to b6, finishing my development, putting a lot of pressure on, on White's center, and now... Uh, the pawn is threatened, so something has to be done. And my calculation before queen b6 was that d5 was a bad move. And I still think d5 is a bad move. That's the reason why I played e6 before uh, queen b6, and also to stop knight d5. So d5 played here. Uh, I don't want to take, obviously. My calculation was I'm going to play knight c to e5. And after knight c to e5, we exchange a pair of knights. I'm threatened with the idea of white playing f4 eventually after takes takes, but that's not really harmful. And already now, after his move queen to d2, I'm sorry, uh, knight take, I took with the bishop. Yeah, okay, sorry. I took with the bishop. Knight takes e5 is another, is another good move, I would say, but I thought the taking with the bishop would be more precise because I'm not sure I really want to give up my knight for his, for his light squared bishop, and I'm not sure my c file pressure would be enough after this exchange. So I thought taking with the bishop would be more active, pinning his knight, uh, eventually threatening to win uh, the d5 pawn because his knight is pinned. Okay, here he played queen to d2, uh, and now I had a choice to make. Uh, a fairly good move is queen d4, I think, uh, at every point in this position, because that indirectly does threaten to, to win the d5 pawn, uh, but I didn't want to exchange the queens. So I continued with knight f6, uh, putting even more pressure on d5. He played king h1, which I agree with uh, if you have an attacking plan of playing f4, because my bishop is, for the moment, uh, under a ton of pressure, and f4 would force my bishop to d4. However, after this move, he takes d5. It's not easy to play f4, because a, I can just capture and win a pawn, uh, b, I can play bishop d4. Uh, e takes d5, and now my mistake. Uh, so in this position I played rook f to e8, which I think is understandable because, well, develop your pieces to the, to the open files makes sense. But the best move definitely was queen to d4, which I had analyzed uh, after the game, and I just couldn't see a response by, by white to queen to d4. I thought this just wins a pawn by force. So declining a queen trade, I don't think is possible. If you go queen f4, then bishop. Uh, if you go queen g5, then bishop f4. Uh, if you go queen e3, I don't know. I can just win the pawn, I guess. So queen takes queen is probably forced. Bishop takes queen, and now the the f2 pawn is hanging. The the d4 pawn, the d5 pawn is hanging. So I was analyzing king to g1, and after king to g1, rook f to e8 now and. I don't see any defense to this. Something like rook to d1, bishop to e5, and something is going to fall eventually. I think I think that 
Black's game is very pleasant here. Pressure on the C file, uh, better major, uh, minor pieces, no, no targets for white to exploit, at least not yet, and a very weak pawn on D5, which I can target. So this was definitely my first mistake, uh, rook f to e8. Rook e to d1. That being said, I still believe black is slightly better, but it's not easy to prove that advantage now. I continued with knight h5, which I thought was the most active move. The obvious threat is bishop to f4. And how, how does uh, white fight that? I mean, what does white do here? I thought that, that in this position there was only one move. In my post-mortem analysis, I could not find another, and that was g3. And I was really happy with when he played g3. And here was my second mistake. So the reason why I played knight h5 uh, and I was expecting g3 was to continue with the move f5. Now after f5, uh, the move f4 would be just horrendous. Uh, I could continue with bishop g7, for example, and then later on do this with st a strategically winning position for black, uh, and also king safety could be the decisive factor. But after f5, let's say he plays bishop g2, which should be the best move. Uh, I was just going to continue with f4, and after f4, g4, I could play f3. And gh5, fg2, check, king g2, something simple like queen d8, and I, I don't think anybody would, would rather be white here. However, after, after the move g3, I did not like the fact that I'm weakening my king side too much, and I couldn't see a direct follow-up. Uh, and some of this, like f3 is my analysis from home, I did not see all of that. I couldn't see a direct follow-up after f4, so I decided to improve my position first. I played rook to e7, which I didn't think could be bad. I thought doubling up my rooks on the e-file should be fine, and then continuing with f5. Bishop g2, uh, rook c to e8, rook to e1, and now finally queen to d4. Because I, I don't see how to improve my position if I don't uh, trade off the queens. Uh, and if I trade off queens, then f2 is under pressure, I'm threatening uh, the rook, so he has to exchange. The d5 pawn is under pressure, so after something like rook e7, rook e7, king to g1, I could go bishop d5, or I could go bishop c3, and then bishop c3, bishop d5. Oh, for the moment, yeah, I'm sorry, his bishop is on g2, so no. But a queen exchange would give me a lot of pressure. For example, if if queen takes d4, bishop d4, king g1, I have knight g3, uh, winning the g3 pawn because the f2 pawn is pinned. He smartly, of course, decides to decline a queen trade, which I understand, and now I need to go back, queen b6, he goes back, queen d2. Now, I don't want to draw, so I need to come up with a different plan. And in this position, still, uh, I thought I was better, and uh, again, I'm not using the engine to analyze my games. If you want, you can find the PGN of the game in the description and check my analysis. I'm, I'm not going to be using engines for, for my analysis anymore. I need, to, I need to improve my understanding and evaluation of posi positions. So after he'd played queen d2 for the second time, I went queen d8. And queen d8, queen d8 I think, is a good move, uh, transferring my queen to the, to, the, uh, to the king side, to the attack, and also preparing to play the move bishop c8, which I thought was really uh, dangerous. Rook cd1, which I didn't understand, I think his rook was better on the c file. Uh, bishop c8, he played bishop a1, defending his bishop finally, and I played bishop g7. In this position, I wouldn't really mind uh, a rook trade, I would recapture with the queen and uh, take control of the e-file. In this position, I have a better dark-squared bishop, which if the knight moves is equal to his, but for the moment mine is better. Definitely a better light-squared bishop, and the knights could be debated, but uh, I think my knight, given its attacking prospects, is very good. Uh, here he played knight e4, uh, and that's in fact a blunder, because of bishop takes, rook takes, and now, pause the video, find a simple move that should give black a decisive advantage. Okay, it's, it's a fairly simple tactic. Uh, the reason why I played bishop c8 is so that I can threaten the h3 pawn. So, bishop takes, bishop takes, and uh, rook takes knight. Unfortunately, I did not play that. Uh, I played a much worse move which makes absolutely no sense in this position. 
And here is why humans are weaker in chess than engines. We are biased to our previous thinking, to our previous plans, to our previous uh, misconceptions or good ideas. And of course, the logical follow-up to knight h5 is f5, so I thought this was the moment to play it. However, f5 is just... Not that it... Uh, not that it's worse than bishop takes h3 because it doesn't win a pawn it's worse because it makes my position worse and i don't win a pawn knight c3 and white is now perfectly fine uh, here was my continuation i thought rook e5 would justify what i did rook takes c5 rook takes c5 knight to e2 and again look at this knight this knight is a monster, much better than my knight. My knight is going to have to be content with the e4 square, which he can be evicted from or captured by the bishop. So I was really unhappy with my position now. I played queen e8, knight d4, knight f6, knight c6, threatening my rook, rook e2, uh, queen d4, and now uh, my third mistake. And this one is way more serious than the previous ones. Um... To be honest, I don't know why I played this move. After the game, when I came to my room, I was looking at this position over the board and I just couldn't believe that I decided to play what I played. Of course, the best move is knight to e4. Uh, knight e4 threatens the f2 pawn and there really isn't an easy way to defend this. Something like uh, rook to uh, f1 is a possibility, but that's... That's very, very passive, and I think black should have uh, a big advantage here, especially because f3 is never possible. So I could even continue with something like bishop to d7 here, and how does he defend? He would have to give up his bishop, and now still, what does he do here? He, there is no way to... to to save this position for, for him, basically, he would have to defend the knight with something like queen b6, but I really don't believe he could get away with a move like that. I think the pressure on the e-file is too much. Instead of that, I played probably the worst move in the position. Of course, my knight is attacked, so I have to do something. I played knight to d7. And knight to d7 is such a huge blunder, because... I'm never getting to the e5 square, I will never be able to use it. The b6 square, which was my target square at first, coming into c4, is really hard to reach as well. And, I mean, I'm not putting pressure on him. I'm simply allowing bishop f3, which he played almost instantly. And I think on a high level, uh, grandmasters and fide masters probably would convert this with white in in. 10 or 20 moves. This is now easy for white to play. Evicting my rook, so I, I basically have to trade. As you can see, I have no squares for my rook. And as soon as this trade happens, I'm much worse. My uh, my back rank is weak. His knight is a monster. His bishop is better than mine. I mean, look at my pieces. They make absolutely no sense. Queen e8, I need to go back. Queen c3 was played by him. And now the blunder, which loses the game... Uh, at this point, I was extremely upset with my play. Uh, I was extremely upset because I had a good position out of the opening. Not winning, not better, but a very solid position. I knew, I knew the plans, managed to get everything I wanted. I had pressure in the center. I could have won the h3 pawn, but I failed. Fine. Still, a move such as knight e4 would have given me the advantage. And all of these thoughts are going through my head and they play a blunder that's just inexplicable. Loses the game in one move. Just loses the game in one move. So what I should have played, which was my first thought, was simply knight to e5. After knight e5, it's equal. And I'm guessing he would have taken. I don't see a much better move for him. Uh, moving the bishop... I think I am going to take the knight uh, and give a check on uh, on e4, even though that doesn't give me much. So I'm expecting him to take take with the pawn, and this is an even position. Bishops of the same color, which often give the advantage to the attacking side, but it's not really clear who's attacking here. I'm going to be playing e4, making his bishop almost obsolete. So let's say he tries to play actively with something like queen c5. Uh, e4, bishop to, I guess, uh, d1 to get his bishop to this diagonal. But I don't think uh, white should have any advantage here. 
But after Queen C3, I played the blunder of the game, Knight B6. And if you want, uh, pause the video, find a winning move for White. White to play and win in one move. Okay, uh, the winning move for White is Queen F6. After Queen F6, I can resign. Uh, White is threatening Knight E7 checkmate, or not? Sorry, Knight E7 threatening checkmate, and I would have to give up my queen. So I basically have to I have to move my H pawn. There is no other way to save to save mate. Uh, I I could go Queen F7, but then Queen D8, and uh, I lose the uh, I lose the knight. Yeah, sorry. So Queen F7, Queen D8 check. I lose the knight. So I need to play either h6 or h5. I figured, why not h5? Now knight e7 check, king h7, queen takes d6, knight c4, queen f6, bishop d7, d6, game over. This is this is over. Knight b6, bishop b7. It's not even to take uh, to take the pawn. It's to remove my bishop from the defense. Knight c8, trying to defend. Bishop c8, bishop c8, knight c8, queen c8, queen e7 check, and this is it. King h6, d7, d8, queen. I don't have a perpetual because he always has a check uh, on e3. So this saves the day for him, uh, and he can cover this diagonal, so I, I don't have a perpetual check. So what did I do wrong? Uh, in a couple of positions where I could have played for an advantage, or I had an advantage, I just had to prove it at one point, even with material, I played a bad move. And the worst thing for me after the game was I just had no idea why. Uh, not taking on h3 is something, is a move, that's a type of move I don't often miss. And I have to say, I. I tried to find similar mistakes in my games. I had a hard time doing that. So I was stuck to my plan, even though it was no longer the best plan. When it was the best plan and the logical follow-up to my previous move, I didn't have enough courage to play it. Then I played it 10 moves later when it makes my position much worse. And then not even I don't even want to mention knight to d7 instead of knight e4. That's just a strategic blunder that... I mean, yeah. It's good that I lost this game because I deserve to be punished for my four stupid mistakes. But it was hard and it was really hard to, to go to the game the next day. I mean, at this point I was losing, I would say, 20 rating points or something like that. When you lose to, to somebody 200 points lower rated, you lose a million points. And that's hard. It's hard to come back from that psychologically. Okay, uh, I'll continue tomorrow with my round 6 game. I hope you like this game. I hope if you play the Sicilian or if you play bishop b5 against the knight c6 Sicilian, you manage to learn something. I think my opponent played a, a very good game uh, until he played a3 b4. That gave black the advantage, but then later on in the middle game, he just outplayed me. I didn't use my chances, he used his. Congratulations to my opponent, and yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, see you tomorrow for another game. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye.